So welcome to TECM 5190. I am super excited to teach this class. Style is something that has been a research focus for me my entire 30-year career. Uh, so I'm excited to share some of what I have learned over the years with you and to help you gain skill that will pay off for you in the workplace. The catalog description has not been updated but this course is one that the department has not offered for several years and we have updated it. So let me give you the course description from the syllabus. It says, focus on the role of writing style in creating tone of voice in content from organizational brands. Students will learn the connection between linguistic style and voice and tone, and then apply their knowledge in analyzing existing technical content as well as developing guidelines for, a, for altering a brand's voice. Okay, so that's what the course is about in a nutshell. What I wanna do in this particular lecture is help you understand how the course is gonna work. So I'll start by presenting the course learning objectives. Then I'll briefly describe the major course assignments and a little bit about how uh, they're supposed to help you achieve the objectives of the course. Then I'll end by uh, helping you get to know a little bit about me and about my style research. So let's get going. As I said, let's start with the goals of the course. The first objective is for you to use industry terminology for style, voice, and tone, and be able to explain their importance in tech comm. This is where we'll start the course, and it's the focus of most of the activities during Module 1 and 2. The second objective is for you to manipulate language to alter style, voice, and tone. You'll begin that work in Module 3, and will continue flexing your writing muscles throughout the remainder of the course. The third objective is for you to assess the effectiveness of style, voice, and tone in technical content. This goal is directly linked to objective two. To manipulate style, voice, and tone, you must be able to assess its effectiveness within its rhetorical context. You'll learn one specific testing technique in module six. The fourth objective is for you to provide effective feedback to content creators. Much of the work tech comm pros do is editorial, so you'll practice techniques for giving feedback in many peer review activities starting in Module 2. The fifth objective is for you to present data and recommendations with slide decks. This is how you'll document your insights from a team project you'll complete near the end of the course. The sixth objective is for you to reflect on your knowledge of writing style and development of new writing skills. You're going to do this through written blog posts in a content management system or CMS like WordPress. The final seventh objective is for you to demonstrate professionalism through actions such as responding quickly to teammates or to me, being truthful, taking responsibility for your learning, and accepting constructive criticism. To achieve these seven objectives and complete the course requires that you move through eight week-long modules of content. Now, let's talk about the course assignments in just a little detail. Before I list the specific assignments, I want to make sure you understand the workload in the course and how best to manage it. I hope you learned what to expect in an eight-week graduate course when you were admitted into one of our degree programs. So you earn three credit hours for completing the course in eight weeks. Here's some background information that you may not know. In the US, universities that receive any federal funds use this definition of credit hour. One hour of classroom or direct faculty instruction and a minimum of two hours of out of class student work each week for approximately 15 weeks. So all of that means a three credit hour course must include at least 135 hours of activity. If we divide those hours over eight weeks instead of 15, we get 16.875 hours every week for eight weeks. In TECM 5200, I've assumed your workload every week is a minimum of 10 hours. I've actually carefully considered how you should allocate those 10 hours to perform best in the course. 
You'll find that information for every module in Canvas in the Start Here module overview. When you view the overview, you'll see a date and time by which I recommend you view the overview information. Obviously, earlier in the week is better. There's a brief description of the main topic for that module, and that's followed by a list of learning objectives that are specific to what's happening in that module. Finally, because the course proceeds through one module for eight weeks, there's a weekly to-do list. This includes every activity you should be engaged in during the module, not only those for which you earn a grade. For TECM 5200, the to-dos are divided into midweek. That means from Sunday up until midnight on and end of week. That means from midnight to Sunday at midnight. Each to-do is connected to the module's learning objectives and ends with a recommended time allocation. For example, I recommend students spend two hours on the instructional materials before midnight in Module 3. If you end up spending far more time on an activity than I've indicated in the overview, please contact me so I can help you figure out why or where you're losing time. I want you to use those 10 hours per week effectively. So now, let's talk about the actual assignments for which you earn grades. This table summarizes it. You'll see this also on Canvas. These are all individual assignments. It includes assignments along with learning objectives they support and the way in which each of them contributes toward the total of 100 points that determine your course grade. And you'll analyze two tone of voice content guides from industry in a report and review the work of your classmates. Then you do a series of revision and analysis activities with tech content, concentrating first on plain language and then on alternative tones of voice. Most of that work will involve reviewing the work of classmates. You'll also create and analyze tone of voice in content created by an AI tool. You'll publish three blog posts reflecting on what you're learning during the course. And at the very end, you'll be evaluated for your professionalism. Now, this table summarizes the two team assignments you'll complete, along with the learning objectives they support and the way in which they contribute toward the total of 100 points in your course grade. You'll finish the course by completing a project that builds on your individual work. Your team will conduct a tone of voice research project, which involves a proposal and then a slide deck report. Details about every assignment are found on Canvas, including how I evaluate your performance. I hope you'll find the Gantt chart showing your workload for each week or module helpful. Teamwork is an essential skill for all technical communicators. You're going to complete a team project that will take place over the last three or so weeks in the course. I want to make sure you understand, though, that I have weighted the assignments you do individually most heavily because, after all, you earn an individual grade in the course. Of the 100 possible points you earn, you get 75 for your individual work. Because I believe you'll better understand the goal of assignments in the course and my standards for judging your performance, I'm going to take a few minutes now to explain a little about my teaching philosophy. If you've taken other courses from me, you may find some of this repetitive, but I talk about my history of style research at the end because it's relevant to this course. So please don't skip The foundation that. of my philosophy comes from work done by a researcher named David Kolb, who studied how adults learn at work. What he found is captured in something called Kolb's experiential learning cycle. The fundamental insight here is that learning happens through multiple cycles. It never occurs in a straight uphill climb. Many people believe that you have to choose between experience or theory when you want to gain knowledge or skills, but that choice actually represents a false dichotomy. Let me explain with an example. Let's say you're a swimmer. You want to learn to compete in the 100 meter butterfly. You enter an event. You have the actual experience of competing. You place fifth. Now, if you quit or you just keep entering more races, you aren't going to learn that much. You got to continue to the next phase of the learning cycle. After your experience, you have to think back on the race. What exactly happened? Reflecting on your experience is necessary if you're committed to learning. 
However, if you get stuck in reflection, you're still not going to learn that much. You've got to keep advancing to the next learning phase. So you talk to your coach who theorizes your lost time at the start and your turn technique slowed you down during the race. He explains why and how you might change your technique. The coach's idea is only theory unless you advance to the experimentation phase of learning. You get in the pool and you try out some new turn techniques. You do some drills for getting off the block more quickly. You get some practice. Again, however, if you stop here, you won't really know what you've learned yet. Instead, you have to start over with the first phase again. You have to compete in another race, get another experience. You might win or not. If you're serious about learning, you'll keep repeating this cycle by reflecting on the most recent experience, theorizing about why things happened, trying something new, and experiencing all over again. What does all this mean for a student in TECM 5190? Well, first it means the assignments I've planned for you require that you move back and forth between thinking and doing. You're probably more comfortable with one than the other, but the quality of both matter for learning. Second, I believe learning is a cyclical process, not simply an outcome. If you focus only on grades and outcome, you're going to be frustrated and you won't learn that much. Third, I expect you to take risks. That's probably going to make you uncomfortable. Sometimes you'll fall down. I know failure is necessary for learning, and I will do all I can to make it safe for you to fail on some tasks without failing the course. Finally, it's an advantage to have a coach to guide you through the learning process. That's my job. I will give you individual coaching, but there are limits on what any one individual can offer. In this course in particular, your interactions with your classmates are very important to your learning. You'll coach each other. That should lead to deeper knowledge for both you and the person you're coaching. Let me close this introductory lecture by helping you get to know just a little about me. I assume you know that I'm at UNT. I joined the university as a professor and as chair of the tech comm department in 2016. In 2020, I stepped aside as chair of the department, took on the role of director of corporate relations. In that role, part of my job is to supervise internships, what we call practicum experiences for our MA students. One of the reasons I encourage you to connect with me on LinkedIn is that that's where I post job or internship opportunities, and I post a lot of them, more than 250 in just the last four months of 2020 during the pandemic. If you prepare yourself with the knowledge and skills that we teach in our tech comm courses, you'll be qualified for many of those openings. Okay, so back to my brief professional history leading up to 2016. My passion for language eventually led me to grad school to study linguistics and tech writing. While I was in school in the late 80s, I worked as a tech editor. I earned my PhD from LSU in 1990 after completing my dissertation research on applications of linguistics to professional writing. More about my dissertation in just a minute. My first job as a professor was in the English department at Auburn University. In 1992, I began work as a professor and researcher at the Air Force's postgraduate school. Then, in 1997, I joined the business school at the University of Alabama, where I stayed for 19 years. During that time, I also served as editor of the IEEE Transactions on Professional Communication for more than 10 years. And at Bama, I also held some administrative positions. So let me say a couple of words about my history of style research. It's a topic that's been near the center of my interests since I was a doctoral student. Two of the major chapters in my dissertation focused on style and were later published as journal articles. One dealt with what textbooks used to call you perspective and the other on managing tone in so-called negative messages. Another portion of my dissertation developed into a paper focused on the value of linguistics in explaining the effectiveness of business and technical writing. I've published around 20 more papers with many different colleagues in the 30 years since then. I would summarize that work by saying it falls into 
three categories. One is dealt with how to manage style when replying to questions from a hostile audience. Another has dealt with how to manage rapport through style in order to be a more effective leader, a more effective physician, and a more effective sales rep. In other words, a more successful professional. More recently, I published on the advertising style in white papers and on plain language. It's important to me that my research has practical implications, so I've collected some of my research into insights into two textbooks that deal, at least in part, on style, revising professional writing and thinking and interacting like a leader. I don't know why you'd want to, but if you have any desire to review any of my publications on style, I've included links in the instructional materials for Module 1. So now you know about the goals of the course, the major assignments, philosophy behind them, and quite a bit about me, actually. Let's get started.